I'm quite often asked, how can you care less about what other people think? It's a fair question because actually a lot of people care a lot about what other people think and that's not so good. Okay, so I've got five general principles that I'd like to share with you. And for a change of scene, I'm in Oxford, although you wouldn't know it from the background. This is actually the a tributary to the River Isis, which is just over there. And just behind me there is the punt ramp. You can't quite see it. And it's a little weir. So that there's the Isis. And it runs past my old college, Lineker, which looks like this. And it's right next to the Department of Psychology where I did my DPhil between 90 and 93. And that's the hole that it used to be in. So it's nice to come back to Oxford and have a look at the old sites that I used to frequent. It's, you know, it's nostalgic. <laughs> Now it's normally a nice thing to have a short commute to work but when I was in Oxford between 90 to 93 this behind me here this was my college that's Lineker College in Oxford and I would live and dine there and this hole in the ground was the Department of Experimental Psychology which is now going to be the Life of Mind Centre or department and that was where I worked that's where I did my DPhil so my commute was literally to cross this road. So I don't think it would be, apart from today, where you go from one room to the next, uh, post lockdown, it'd be hard to have a shorter commute. Okay, so the first sort of guideline or rule, if you like, is this. You can never know what somebody else is thinking. So if you think that you know what somebody else is thinking, you're, you're mind reading, okay, you're, you're reading their mind, but you can't know what other people are thinking. And so what you're actually doing, and this is a principle for, in, in essence, all social anxiety elements, is that you have a negative belief about yourself and you're projecting that negative belief out into somebody else and you're imagining that it belongs to them. So when you, when you say, well, they might think I'm useless, they might think I'm stupid, they might think I'm horrible, they might judge me. No, those are things that you believe about yourself. And if that's the case, with some self-examination, just to recognize that you're projecting your negative beliefs out and then imagining that's what people think about you is a big step forward because that actually is, to a degree, the heart of the problem. So, okay, your life is like a movie, right? It's like a story. It has a beginning and a middle and an end, and you have to be the star of that story because somebody has to be the star of that story, and if it's not you, it has to be somebody else. And if someone else is the star of your movie, then you're an extra, you're a subsidiary, you're, you're like an afterthought in a way, and that's no good because it's your life. You only get the one and it's yours. Suppose you were concerned, well, suppose you had a, a talent with music, but you're terribly concerned about what other people think about you. That concern might inhibit you from making music. It might inhibit you from performing and it might change the course of your life. So if you are concerned about the quality of your music and doing a good job, it might go in this particular direction. If you're concerned about what other people think about you, it might go in a completely different direction. And that might not be a direction that works for you to give you a good experience. Likewise with art. Likewise with the movies that I make, for instance. If I was overly concerned about what people think about them, then I might be inhibited from doing them. And I wouldn't be able to share my ideas about active self-help and the application of psychology to, to everyday mental health problems. And then that would be a, I think that would, that would take an element away from my life that I enjoy doing. So, you have to be the star of your movie because someone's gonna be the star. And if it's not you, well, who the heck's it gonna be?
Sometimes being overly concerned about what other people think about you can inhibit your voice, your ability to speak your truth. And the fact is, everybody expects everybody to speak their truth because people who, who just speak their truth, which basically means they have an opinion, they're able to express their opinion, they expect everyone to behave similarly. But if you can't speak your truth for one reason or another, then you are you're depriving yourself of your voice. And if you just think about it, a voice is how you communicate with the world. Your voice is your creative expression, it's your intellectual expression, it's your emotional expression. It's, it's how you connect with the person next to you. Your voice is your thing. And if you're deprived of your voice because you have voluntarily given it away because you're too concerned about what other people may think about it, then you're, you're kind of, you're walking with your legs shackled together so that you're not going to take any steps. It's very, very hard to move forward. You have a voice. You're entitled to have a voice the same as everybody else. It doesn't matter whether other people like your voice. You know, it's like, it's like being able to sing. Being able to sing is a good thing. Now, it doesn't mean you're a good singer. I like dancing. I enjoy dancing. It doesn't mean that I'm a good dancer. It just means that I enjoy dancing. I likewise, I enjoy making these videos. I enjoy expressing my ideas. I enjoy the, the expression of my voice in dance or in voice or in video, right? You're entitled to have a voice and you're entitled to express it. And you have to recognize that entitlement. What other people think about it is irrelevant because your voice is your life and you're entitled to a life. As I'm making this video, there's a path just over here and there are people walking up and down all the time and I'm standing here next to the ISIS making my video and they're up and down on their bicycles because it's Oxford or they're walking up and down and they're not paying any attention to me because the truth is Whilst it seems like a strange thing to do to stand on the riverbank making a video, nobody cares. Nobody cares. Everyone's too wrapped up in their own world. They're, they're thinking about their own thoughts. They're planning what they're going to do next. They're talking to someone. They're actually self-absorbed. Everybody is self-absorbed. And so nobody cares what I do. Nobody cares that I'm standing here doing this. Nobody cares really what you say. Now, I don't mean that in a bad way. I don't mean that nobody cares about you. I mean that nobody really pays that much attention to what you say, what you do, and, and what you think about yourself. So actually, nobody cares is, is, a, is a release. It's a releasing idea because you're free to be who you want to be, to be who you are. No one cares and no one's going to try and stop you. And actually, people will say, good for you. Go for it. Why not? It's your life. Do what you like. And the final guideline I have for you to help you to better manage being overly concerned about what you think other people think about you is this. Practice allowing yourself to have the opportunity to be you without self-censoring, without uh, putting barriers and limitations on yourself. You have to practice being, in a sense, expressive. Expressing your opinion, your view, expressing your art, expressing your creativity, expressing your life, being you and expressing your life. And if you've been concerned about what you think other people think about you for a period of time, in principle, you're practicing that. You're practicing inhibiting yourself by practicing that. So what you're actually doing is, is that you're, you're restricting your internal life and that restricts your external life. As you feel restricted, because I can't do that in case people think it's funny or I can't do that because people will judge me. As you restrict your internal life by, by creating these beliefs about what the consequences of your expression will be, you're also restricting your external life. And you are the sum total of the decisions and choices you've made. So if you've been practicing doing that, your life is going to feel restricted. And therefore, it's going to feel a bit challenging to express yourself, to express opinion, to express your, your creativity, to express your life. It's going to feel a bit challenging. But there isn't an alternative. You have to do it. You have to challenge it. Because if you don't challenge it, it won't change. 
And what we're after is small, doable changes that are sustainable, they're not too hard to make, but they're doable. So I've just walked through Oxford, it's really, really busy. And I was thinking about making a video in the, in the, the street, but it's just too busy and too noisy. So I've come down here by the river, but the geese are objecting. The geese were objecting to, <laughs> the geese were objecting to what I was saying. So uh, they've decided to carry on eating grass instead. Okay. This is a punt ramp. So if you're punting along the river and you want to get onto a different bit, this punt ramp gives you the opportunity to take your punt over the rollers and to take it down to here. 